Oracle is a $230 billion company with a forever free plan for their virtual private servers, allowing pretty much anyone to use their servers to host websites for $0 a month. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set everything up. First, navigate to oracle.com slash cloud slash free and click on the start for free button. Here, you'll need to fill out some information about yourself and you need to be accurate. I've tried spoofing this, it didn't work. The information needs to be 100% correct for you to get approved, otherwise you'll just get rejected. It's a quick email and credit card verification, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Keep in mind that your card won't ever be charged apart from the initial $1 that you get back immediately. This is just used as a way to verify your identity and stop bots from taking all of these servers from themselves. Once approved, here's your control panel. As you can see here, it does say that I'm on the free tier and I won't be charged unless I click the upgrade button myself. To get started, click on create a virtual machine. You can name it whatever you want. Now next to image and shape, click on edit, then change image. For this tutorial, I'll be using canonical Ubuntu, so switch to that. And for the shape, use ampere. This will allow you to get the maximum possible resources. So crank that slider all the way up to four cores and 24 gigabytes of RAM, and then click select shape. You'll also want to save your private key and public key for later by clicking here. Now click create and you'll get some IP addresses assigned automatically. So you'll have to click on create again. Your virtual private server will now be created automatically. While it says provisioning, that means it's still being made. After some time, it will turn green and say running. That means everything's working just fine. But at this point, we only have an IP address to work with. So we'll need to attach a domain name for it to look better and for us to have an easier time controlling our website. We'll do this using a domain name system to point a new A record to this IP address. To do that, visit the provider where you purchased your domain name, mine's Hostinger. Now I'll create a free subdomain called oracleadmin.emitreviews.com. It's going to be the page from where I'll control my server. And I'll also create oraclefree.emitreviews.com. This is going to be the name of my website that I'm making. You don't have to use subdomains as I did. I could have used emitreviews.com itself, but I just use subdomains because they're free. And in the spirit of this free hosting tutorial, let's get everything that's free. Next, navigate to the DNS area of your provider and look up the subdomains you've just created. Delete the quad A records and change the A records to use the IP address of your free Oracle server that you can find right here. Now we'll also need a way to communicate with our server. There is no user interface, so we'll have to use an SSH connection. To get started, visit putty.org and download this software. We'll use putty to talk and issue commands to our virtual machine. So once installed, you should have two programs on your PC called putty gen and putty. Open both of them. And remember those keys we downloaded when we were creating our virtual machine? Yeah, we'll use those keys now to authenticate and prove that it's indeed us, the admin, that's trying to connect to the server. In PuttyGen, click on Conversions, then Import Key and navigate to the folder where you saved your private and public keys. Look for a file that ends in key, just like this, then open it. This will convert the key into a format that Putty can understand. So click Save Private Key and save it under a different name. You can now close PuttyGen, uh, we won't need it for the rest of this tutorial. Okay, so it's time to connect to our server using Putty. Inside your Oracle control panel, you'll see your IP address and username. Paste your IP address into Putty, also give this connection a name. It can be whatever you want and save it. So we could reuse it later without having to do all of these steps again. Next, navigate to SSH, then Auth and Credentials. Here, you'll want to upload the private key file you saved from PuttyGen and finally go back to sessions and before your IP address, type in Ubuntu at. Click open and accept. If you see this black window, great. That means we've made a connection to our virtual machine and we can start installing stuff on it. Type in sudo su dash, press enter and then paste in the code to download required software. 
you can paste in just by right-clicking and press enter to execute the commands. Keep in mind, I'll have all of these commands in the pinned comment of this video, so don't worry, you don't have to type it in all by hand. Just let the installation finish until you see this purple screen, and then simply press enter, and then enter again to issue all of the needed updates. We'll now run another installer, so paste in this and wait for the installation to finish. Keep in mind, it can take like 5, 10 or 15 minutes to complete, and while everything is installing, we can use that time to open up some ports that will be necessary to connect to our control dashboard and our website. To do that, go back to your Oracle panel and click on the Virtual Cloud Network text, then the subnet and default security list. Click Add Ingress Rules and type in 0.0.0.0/0 here and 80 in the port range. This will open up HTTP connections, so I'll name it HTTP. Let's add another rule for HTTPS. It's also 0.0.0.0/0 and the port is 443. When that's taken care of, we'll also need a port for the control panel we're installing, Cloud Panel. The port for Cloud Panel is 8443. Finally, let's add our FTP ports, which are 20 and 21, then a range of 49152-65534. So doing the ports like this one by one is not necessary or even time efficient. You could have added all of the ports in one go just by separating them by a comma, but I like to label mine so I always do it like this, then I know what's responsible for what. And finally, at this point our installation should be finished and you should see this screen. Type in reboot for the changes to take effect, now copy this address together with the port just by selecting it and paste it into a new tab to connect to your control panel. If everything went right, you should see an SSL warning. That's completely normal. Just click Advanced and Proceed. Here you'll be able to create your admin account for the cloud panel, so fill that out and log into your panel. Okay, I promise from here on out it's gonna get much easier. No more working with commands, just a good old interface. Let's start by adding a domain name to this dashboard, so we don't have to use the IP address to connect every single time. Click on Admin, then Settings, and type in the domain you want to use. I'll use one of these subdomains I created for this exact purpose, it's oracleadmin.emitreviews.com. After saving, you can use this domain name to access your control panel. It's much easier to remember than just a random IP address. Okay, let's finally install WordPress onto our website. In your dashboard, click on Add Site and create a WordPress site. Type in the website name that you want. Again, I'll use one of the subdomains I've created for this purpose earlier in the tutorial. It doesn't have to be a subdomain, you can use any name you want. The installation is really fast. You'll get this text document with all of your login info. You can save it if you wish, just make sure to not keep it like on your desktop or something. Now click on Manage next to your site and we'll change some settings around. Update the PHP to 8.2 max file size and a max post size to 512 megabytes as well. I forgot to do it here, but basically it allows you to easily import websites that are up to 512 megabytes in size through plugins like all-in-one WordPress migration. Then click on the SSL slash TLS tab to add a free SSL certificate to your domain by selecting new Let's Encrypt certificate. Okay, at this point, you can reach your WordPress website as usual. Just type in the domain name followed by slash wp-admin and use the login credentials that you have created while installing WordPress. I'll show you how to create free website backups for your site so you never lose your files in just a second. But first, let's quickly test the performance of this hosting. After all, it is a free plan, so I don't exactly know what to expect. I've used a backup of another website I had and quickly uploaded that here to test out the performance. Here's how the website looks currently, and keep in mind it is quite a heavy website. It's using multiple pages that are full of pictures and animations. And the performance? It's decent. I mean, time to first byte of 0.8 seconds is definitely quite slow. You want that to be under 500 milliseconds and even then it's pushing it a little bit, but overall load time of 1.5 seconds is definitely not bad. I would say this is even better than some of the paid shared web hosting plans I've tested on this channel, and Google Page Insights kinda agree with me. 
because it scores this website as 94 on mobile and 99 on desktop. For free web hosting, this is definitely better than I've expected. Keep in mind that I'm also filming this tutorial two days after I've actually set up the site, so I have some stability data. I've added the site to my public web hosting monitoring system that you can reach on uptime.emitreviews.com. This is where I monitor how often every single web hosting provider I currently have goes down. I've added this website and in the past two days, it's been online 100% of the time. Maybe a week more has passed before I finished editing this video and upload it to YouTube, so you can hop onto uptime.emitreviews.com to check how the stability is for yourself in real time. Okay, performance aside, continuing the tutorial, here's how you set up your free backups for this free website. Go to dropbox.com and sign up for a free account by filling up all of this data. Choose the 2GB basic plan, and once your account is ready, go back to Cloud Panel. Click on Admin and Backups, choose Dropbox, click on Request Access Code, and just paste in the code you get into Cloud Panel. Now, you'll automatically save your website backups onto Dropbox, but you can also create one manually by pressing Create Backup at any time you want. So by this point, you should have an awesome free website with an easy-to-use control panel and backups. All of these are hosted on the Oracle free tier plan and will stay free as long as this service keeps up and running. That's determined by Oracle. Let me know in the comments down below if you want for me to create a guide on how to connect free email to this website as well. And as always, good luck creating your websites.